Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Retrieval Enhanced Transformer, or in short, Retro, which is a way of improving your language models by retrieving from trillions of tokens. So let's get started. What is Retrieval Enhanced Transformer, or Retro? Right. So it's a model which is very similar to Realm. It's basically using Retrieval Augmentation for natural language generation. Okay. So uh, it combines a frozen bird retriever a differentiable encoder and a chunked cross attention decoder. OK, so it's a basically transform transformer based encoder decoder model uh, along with a retriever. Retriever is frozen. So unlike Realm or RAG where the retriever was also, you know, um, uh, essentially updated over iterations and so on. Here the retriever is completely frozen. Uh, there is a differentiable encoder as you see here, and there is also a decoder as you see there. Uh, it uses something called as chunked cross attention, which I will describe on the next slide. Okay, so for training the retriever as well as the uh, original, uh, as well as the complete model, they use multilingual massive text data set. This data set essentially contains 120. Uh, this this data set contains data from the general web, books, news, Wikipedia, and GitHub. Overall, the vocabulary size of the model is 128,000. So let's talk about these individual components one by one. So the frozen bird retriever uh, essentially has a two trillion token, uh, uh, two trillion token key value. It's, it's a two trillion token key value database. So each entry there is a key value pair, and there are two, 20, two trillion such uh, entries. Right? So what are keys? Keys are of course uh, frozen bird embeddings uh, that are averaged over time. So essentially, if you have a large piece of text, a large chunk of text in that census. You basically take that chunk, find BERT embeddings per token, and then uh, average them out. So that gives you basically the BERT embeddings, averaged BERT embedding over time for the entire uh, chunk of text. The values consist of two parts. Actually, they are two contiguous chunks rather than one uh, called as N and F. Um, so N is the neighbor chunk. It's called as the neighbor chunk, and this is the, the one which is used to compute the key using BERT, of course. And F is its continuation in the original document. So in some ways, the idea is that you want to use a small chunk and compute its embedding using BERT so that it does not take too much of time. And then you also want to keep F, which is basically its continuation in the original document. Right? So that's the that's how the retriever is um, created. And uh, you know all of these embeddings are essentially indexed using uh, something called as a scan library and looked up using the scan library. Um, and uh, the scan library lookup time is just 10 milliseconds. So basically given a query, you know, it can actually find nearest neighboring uh, um, nearest neighboring uh, documents uh, or, or uh, you know, any of those two trillion entries within 10 milliseconds, right? So that's really awesome and efficient. Um, now for training the transformer encoder decoder, uh, when you have an input of size N, they fix N to 204 at size. They split the input into L different chunks. So of uh, of fixed size, and in their case, the size of each chunk is 64. So there are 64 sized chunks, right? So here you see an example where the input is broken down into three chunks, uh, each of size four. Okay, but originally they basically use 64 size chunks. Uh, and then, uh, so as you can see, uh, you know, uh, when you get an input, uh, you essentially uh, uh, when you get input tokens, you divide them into chunks, and then these chunks are essentially given. Uh, uh, you compute the word encoding for each chunk um, using uh, nearest neighbors. You essentially find from the retrieval data set nearest neighbors for each chunk. So there are, there are these neighbors for green chunk, neighbors for blue chunk, and well, you can actually have neighbors for yellow chunk also, which are not shown here. Yeah. So these uh, uh, these nearest neighbors are essentially, uh, and here we have retrieved two neighboring documents in that sense, right? So essentially, these neighbors are passed through transformer encoder so as to get their transformed representations. This encoder can be, uh, you know, is a small encoder, so maybe one or two transformer encoder layers, right? Uh, but it has cross attention. So this encoder, this transformer encoder, does just does not take these neighbors. It also is conditioned on uh, you know uh, the attentional output from the decoder, and we'll talk about how that appears. But you know the idea is that it is uh, uh, somehow uh, going to incorporate this extra uh, extra information which is coming from the decoder side. Okay. 
So, so let's see. So, so the uh, encoder essentially is a cross attention encoder. Now, what is cross attention? Again, I'll talk on the next slide, but uh, it computes the cross attention uh, of 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 uh, the output here. You know, let's basically call as retrieved documents uh, for a particular chunk. Remo remember, you know, if you have a chunk C U, um, you know, you basically retrieve documents per chunk. So that is basically retrieved documents for C U, and you essentially also compute cross attention in these transform encoder layers with respect to the edge output that is coming from the retro block from the retro block of, of, of the decoder yeah so that's that uh, now uh, let's see uh, uh, i mean this will become more clearer when we talk about cross attention in the next slide transformer decoder essentially uh, has several layers so uh, in fact they train four different checkpoints of different sizes uh, from 172 million to 7.5 billion parameters, and the transformer decoder is from 12 layers to 32 layers, as you see. Now, transfer, transformer decoder essentially contains of several layers. Uh, the some of them, some of these layers are standard transformer blocks or transformer layers, while some of them are actually retro blocks. Right. So, what are retro blocks? Or rather, what are transformer blocks? Well, transformer blocks basically contain uh, two kinds of uh, two two different layers: feedforward sublayer and the self-attention sublayer. However, there are these retro blocks which contain three different sublayers: attention sublayer, cross-attention sublayer, and feedforward sublayer. Now, the attention and feedforward sublayer are usual, but how does cross-attention sublayer work? Well, the cross-attention sublayer essentially uh, has the query coming in from the decoder side itself, while it has the keys and values coming in from the transformer encoder. Keys and values coming in from the transformer encoder, right? So that is uh, that is how uh, the retro block looks like, and there are several such retro blocks. In fact, in a 12-layer network, uh, uh, you know, uh, layers six, nine, and 12 are retro block kind of layers, while the remaining layers are the standard transformer decoder layers. Okay, standard transformer decoder layers. OK, so of course, transformer decoder has uh, an embedding uh, input embedding layer, and also it has a read output layer where basically you take the output uh, per token and then convert it to a vocabulary uh, uh, connected to a vocabulary sized output tense layer. OK, so now one puzzle to solve is what is cross attention, right? And uh, how is this cross attention computed? Um, well, in fact, in the decoder, uh, what we use is something called as a chunked cross attention. So as you see here, the CCA is being used. CCA is chunked cross attention. Okay. So what is chunked cross attention? So in fact, before we answer what is chunked cross attention, it is important to understand what is cross attention. Okay. So if you have two matrices H and Y, Cross attention basically um, uh, has these learnable parameters Q, K, V. I mean, as you could assume or understand, right? But basically takes H and does uh, Q, K, transpo uh, K, Q transpose uh, H, right? Uh, just like a standard self attention. But then the cross attention, what you do is to also multiply it with Y and then compute softmax and then multiply it with Y, V. So that basically gives you cross attention. Okay. Uh, now think a little bit about how this works, but this is uh, pretty intuitive in that sense. That if you have two weight matrices, uh, two matrices H and Y, right? You can act, and if you want to compute cross attention uh, in some ways, come up with a revised version of H. The way you would do it is exactly this. Okay. Um, now uh, the idea behind chunked cross attention, though, which is basically used uh, in the decoder. Remember, cross attention is used in the transformer encoder, but chunked cross attention is used in the transformer decoder. So the idea behind that is as follows: uh, uh, you have in the decoder H coming in, uh, which is basically the output of the attention sublayer. Okay, so we are actually looking at uh, uh, enlarged perspective of this CCA block. OK, so we basically take the CCA chunked, uh, chunked uh, um, uh, cross attention block and we're looking at an enlarged piece of a version of this here. OK, so you get the edge from this attention sub layer. Um, you basically uh, split H into L minus one chunks. So you see uh, there are several chunks that you see here. So H1, H2, H3, three different chunks. OK. Uh, now these chunks, the way you split further is to basically create what is called as HU plus. So the idea is that uh, you take uh, the last token from the previous chunk and the all the tokens except the last one from the next chunk, and that gives you H1 plus. So that is why if you basically originally had L different parts or L different chunks at the input, you will get L minus one chunks uh, called as HU plus. Okay. 
We remember each of those chunks basically uses uh, the last token, the last green token, for example, in this case from the previous chunk and all but the last token from the next chunk. OK. Now you're going to take this and uh, essentially so your HU plus has, uh, uh, you know, uh, is, is basically the way we mentioned is constructed the way we mentioned and then CCA essentially uh, takes this uh, uh, this HU plus and then it basically does a cross attention with your embeddings coming uh, with, with your uh, with your, uh, uh, you know, keys and values coming from uh, the transformer encoder. Let's call this output as E. So essentially, therefore, you know, what is this cross attention? Well, this cross attention is being computed between H1 plus and, and E1, H1 plus and E1, right? So that's how basically this uh, uh, cross attention is computed. Um, so, uh, and of course, you know, uh, for the second uh, second H2 plus, you'll basically compute cross attention with E2, right? You take these cross attention values. Of course, for the first chunk, there is no, uh, there is no, uh, you know, um, uh, previous chunk, and therefore you copy it as it is. No changes made. Okay, so you take all of them, concatenate all of them, and that's basically the output of your CCS sublayer. Okay, so that's the output of your CCS sublayer. Um, so that's that. Now at test time, essentially, um, you know, when you are generating things at test time, at the end of a chunk CU, you know, on the on the generation side. Uh, you basically whenever you know you have enough tokens that you can say that hey CU is formed now a chunk is formed you use the scan same scan and the index to retrieve neighbors uh, for CU based on the embedding uh, part embedding of CU right and then you take those encoded neighbors which are encoded by the transfer encoder remember EU and then you compute and then you sort of uh, um, you know do all of this business cross attention business and so on uh, so so essentially what you do is to create the next chunk cu plus one uh, incrementally of course token by token uh, by by doing uh, transformer decoder uh, you know all the layers of transformer decoder where some of them are standard transformer decoder layers while some of them are these cca based uh, cca based retro sub layers okay so how does retro perform um, so these authors actually compared retro on uh, language modeling, uh, several language modeling data sets, C4, wiki text 103, curation corpus, lambda and pi, right? So what they observed is the following. Uh, uh, this chart basically shows what happens when the, when the uh, model size increases, right? So they basically experimented four different model sizes and they observed uh, that as you increase the model size, uh, you know, uh, 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 whether you use retro or not, well, if you if you just use the standard transformer, this is the curve. If you use retro, this is the curve. Uh, the lower, the better. So in this matrix, the lower, the better. So therefore, what you observe is clearly that using retro gives you better accuracy. Yeah. So what happens if you increase the size of your retrieval data set? Remember, this retrieval data set was a trillions, right? So very large. So in fact, around two trillion massive text uh, token, uh, two trillion token based data set. So what you observe is that uh, as you increase the size of the data set, um, you know, across different model sizes, you observe that uh, uh, there is a dramatic increase, a dramatic improvement in the metric. Again, lower the better. So there is a very good improvement in the metric. Okay, a language modeling basically, right? Uh, what do you observe when you increase the number of neighbors? Well, so uh, if you increase the number of neighbors, you keep increasing the number of neighbors up to almost 40 and you observe that the model gets better and better, right? Uh, so those are the observations. Now, uh, you know, if you compare retro with GPD-3 or Jurassic 1 on the pile data set, uh, people observed uh, that it is actually better than GPT-3 or Jurassic 1 on pile data set in spite of having 25x fewer number of parameters, okay? 25 times less number of parameters. So in summary, in this video, I talked about Retro, which is Retrieval Enhanced Transformer. It combines a frozen BERT retriever, a differentiable encoder, and a chunk cross-attention decoder. Uh, the BERT retriever is frozen. It uses the scan uh, kind of a lookup technique, which just takes 10 milliseconds, but they do more optimizations, in fact, in the method where they pre-compute nearest neighbors and keep. Yeah. Uh, transformer decoders inter interleaves the Retro blocks and standard transformer blocks. Um, the model uses chunked cross attention. Uh, it uses cross attention even on the encoder side. And finally, they showed state of the art results on the wiki text 103 and the pile data set. Okay, if you want to play around with the code, you can have a look there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.